In this video, we're going to look at what it takes to transform all the information we've developed about bar elements to convert them into truss elements. So in other words, to be able to use the tension compression member in two or three dimensional space. For now, we'll just consider the 2D transformation. What we're going to focus on is the vector D that represents the translation or displacement of a single node. And we can describe that vector D in terms of two different sets of coordinate axes. The X and Y system that corresponds to our global coordinate system and the X prime Y prime which is local to the particular bar element. So in the case of the bar element we're looking at here, X prime would correspond to the axis of the bar. So we can write the vector D in terms of these two coordinate systems. In the global system, D is just dx times i hat plus dy times j hat. In the local coordinate system, D can be written as dx prime i hat prime plus dy prime times j hat prime. Recognize that these two vectors D are just one vector. Uh, it can be written in two different ways. The coefficients, or the, I'm sorry, the components of D are the degrees of freedom that we're referring to when we look at the element. So in the local coordinate system, the translational degree of freedom along the axis of the bar is dx prime. That's going to get converted to a dx and a dy in the global system. So what we want to do is relate these two different ways of describing D. So first off, we need to relate the unit vectors that are listed here. So we're going to take i hat prime and break it into two pieces, one aligned with the x-axis in the global system and one with the y-hat axis. So i hat prime is equal to i hat cosine theta plus j hat sine theta. Similarly, j hat prime is equal to minus i hat sine theta plus j hat cosine theta. So now that we have that relationship, we can go back to the local coordinate expression for D and then expand out those unit vector terms. As you see here, I've now written D in local coordinates but using the expanded definition of the i hat prime and the j hat prime so that now the unit vectors are the global coordinate unit vectors. If I rearrange terms then, this tells me that the vector D can be written as i hat times dx prime cosine theta minus dy prime sine theta but if we look up at the top that's what we're calling dx similarly j hat the j hat term for d is dx prime sine theta plus dy prime cosine theta or up here that's just dy so here's that expression equated this is d equals d written in the global coordinate unit vectors I'm going to look at each component separately, so I get a dx, definition of dx in terms of dx prime and dy prime, and a definition of dy in terms of dx prime and dy prime. I can write this expression in matrix form, where I have a global degree of freedom vector equal to a transformation matrix multiplied by a local degree of freedom vector. We're going to find that it's actually better to go the opposite direction, from global back to local, and, and we'll see why in just a few minutes. But if we invert that matrix, we can get that relationship. So I can define the local degrees of freedom in terms of the global with this transformation matrix. So this is now referring to the degrees of freedom at a single node. So it's not the degree of freedom vector for the full element yet. So this is how we're going to convert a stiffness matrix. We're going to use these transformation matrices. So how can we use this relationship to transform a stiffness matrix? Well, the approach is, first of all, we expand out the matrix to account for the fact that we have two nodes in each element. And in this case, we end up with the oblong matrix you see here because the global coordinate system for a bar element has four degrees of freedom. The first node can translate in the x and the y direction, and the second node can translate in the x and the y direction. Whereas in the local coordinate system, the bar element simply has one degree of freedom at each node and it's oriented along the local x coordinate. So I'm going to rewrite this expression in simplified form. So I've got the local degree of freedom vector is equal to a transformation matrix T star multiplied by the global degree of freedom vector D. Okay, so we've got this. What does this do for it? 
Well, think back to when we defined the stiffness matrix using the potential energy formulation. We came up with an expression, specifically the internal strain energy, that was derived for an element. When I went through that derivation, I didn't make any specific definition that it was local or global, but because we were integrating over the element, it just makes sense to say that we were defining a local element coordinate system. So in fact, what we had developed was something that we'll call K prime, K in the local coordinate system. And this came from, again, the internal strain energy expression. Everything in parentheses shown here is what we're calling k prime. That is what we define to be the stiffness matrix, but it's because it's integrated over the elements coordinate system, it is a local coordinate stiffness matrix. And you can see then it's pre and post multiplied by the local coordinate degree of freedom vector. Now I have an expression here that will take that local coordinate degree of freedom vector and convert it to global coordinates, or vice versa, in fact. But if I take this expression d prime and I plug that in down here for the, the d primes, and then I do the same thing for the transpose. Remember, with the transpose, I have to reverse the order when I'm doing the multiplication. What I get is an expression where I've got the global degree of freedom vector d transpose and then d on the right-hand side. And I've introduced some transformation matrices pre and post multiplied by my local K prime. Okay, so we can do that just based on what we've done previously. But now think about this. Potential energy doesn't care what your coordinate system is. So I should be able to write that U is also equal to, in the global coordinate system, D transpose times K times D with a one half out front. So if I compare then these two expressions for U, they've got to be the same thing. Internal strain energy doesn't care what coordinate system I'm using to describe it. So this actually then gives me a definition of K in the global coordinate system from K prime in the local coordinate system. And I get there by pre and post multiplying by the transformation matrix T star. So just to summarize that, what we're doing is we're taking a bar element that we defined a very simple stiffness matrix, a two by two stiffness matrix for it, and we're converting it into a truss element, an element that we can use in two or three dimensional space. In this case, we're looking at the 2D. And it's based on this relationship that I've just derived where K is equal to T star transpose times K prime times T star. If I plug in those values here using the simple k prime that we developed for the bar element and then the t star that i previously developed where theta here represents the angle measured from the global to the local x-axis i can multiply these out and i get now a standard expression for a 2d truss element where theta represents the angle between the global x-coordinate and the axis of the truss member so you could go straight to this but I think it's also important to see where it came from because of this uh, transformation matrix multiplication. There's one more thing we need to talk about when we're transforming elements, and that is the post-processing step. So after you've transformed from a local element stiffness matrix to the global, you can go through the rest of the solution process. You, do, you assemble, you apply boundary conditions, you invert the matrix, you solve four degrees of freedom. But then you need to go back into each element in order to find the stresses. So we have to use that transformation matrix again to take the degrees of freedom back to the local element system. So we have the definition of strain, which is a local uh, factor. Sig or epsilon is equal to the B matrix times D prime, the local degrees of freedom. But we don't have D primes after the solution of the global system. What we have is D. So we need to take D prime and substitute in T star times D. And then similarly, once we know epsilon, we can pre-multiply it by the D matrix. In the case of the bar element, that's just E. Um, and that gives us then DBT times D gives us the stress vector for an element. And this is a little bit cumbersome as we're applying it to a bar element, but it's good to go through this process because we'll use a very similar process for a few other element types. 